All right, so we got a letter A. Uh, without, without that end, without this end right here, it's geometric. So geometric, not geometric. Geometric, not geometric. So since it's not geometric, we're going to use a ratio test. We're going to say limit as n approaches infinity. Now since we're taking the absolute value, we're going to ignore the fact that it's alternating. Because all of those negatives would be taken care of with the absolute value. So we have x minus 5 to the n plus 1. We're doing exactly what we did yesterday, except we have x's in here. So now we're, we're not saying, is it convergent? We're saying, what makes it convergent? So times the reciprocal, or we're dividing, multiply by the reciprocal. And we take this one piece at a time now. We have the limit as n approaches infinity, absolute value of... We have an extra x minus 5 on top, an extra 2 in the denominator, and then we have n over n plus 1. But we're doing the limit as, it, as n approaches infinity, we're doing the limit on n, and that the ending behavior ends up being 1 over 1. We have the x, absolute value of x minus 5 over 2 is less than 1. So negative 1 less than x minus 5 over 2 less than 1, multiply by 2, oops, 2, not 1, 2. Well, now we have our radius of convergence, because we're centered at 5, x minus 5, centered at 5, and we're 2 to the left and 2 to the right. Now, when we add 5, we have 2 to the left and 2 to the right, and just add 5, it just moves everything over 5. So the interval is still the same. The radius is still the same. Not the interval. The radius is still the same. So the radius of convergence I can get right now, it's 2. And then if I add 5, I get 3 is less than x is less than 7. Now what's right down the middle of 3 and 7? Yeah, 5. It's centered to 5. Yeah, makes sense, right? That's where the center is. Right down the middle is 5. 5 to 7 is 2. 5 to 3 is 2 units away. So the interval of convergence is 3 to 7. So this series is centered at 5, and it's good 2 units away. After 2 units away, it gets bad. You got a bad series. Off to the right, let's practice probably the trickiest part right now. And I want to try to make this easy for you. Let's go with... Uh, n plus 3 factorial over n factorial, over n factorial, let's do that. No, 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 let's go uh, n plus 1 factorial. How would that reduce? That's what we're going to practice a little bit here. And what you want to try to do is make both of these the smallest value. So we'll make the top n plus 1 factorial, we'll make the bottom n plus 1 factorial, and then i got to make n plus 3 factorial. So that's times n plus 2 and times n plus 3. For example, 8 factorial is 6 factorial times 7 times 8. Would you agree with that? Right there, you're good with that? So to make n plus 3 factorial, I can go n plus 1 factorial times another one times another one. That's n plus 3 factorial. So those cancel, and what remains is n plus 2, n plus 3. Everybody good with that? Yeah? All right, that's reducing factorials. That's probably the stuff that you, I don't know if you've ever done. All right, let's keep rolling with these then. Is there anything you notice about this one? It's what now? It's over all of it. It's over all of it. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> the whole thing is still count. So what? So what's that? Mean? You're right. Yeah, it's geometric, isn't it? No, you're. Oh, I see. No. Uh -huh. no. <laughs> yeah. I thought that's what you're going after. I'm making an observation. It's a good observation. This is geometric. So r is uh, x over three. Because that's what we're multiplying by every time x over three. We need the absolute value of x over three to be less than one, because that's what geometric series says. 
your R has to be less than 1. So negative 1 less than x over 3 less than 1. Negative 3 less than x less than 3. Uh, so the interval of uh, convergence is negative 3 to 3, and the radius of convergence is 3 units. So don't, uh, don't throw away everything we've learned just because the last thing we did was ratio test. That's geometric, and it, it, there's, a, there's probably a little less writing on geometric. All right, so what do we got? Other than geometric, the first example we had was a nice interval with a nice radius. Let's look at this example here. Factorial automatically says ratio test, and that'll be true the, throughout the entire chapter. So limit as n approaches infinity, that's the value of, now remember we're plugging n plus 1 in for n. So we have n plus 1 in for n plus 1. That's 2n plus 2, 2n plus 3. So this is x to the 2n plus 3 over 2n plus 3 vectorial. So there's plugging n plus 1 in for n's. Times, uh, this is a smart board. Let's do something smart. Oh, that's not smart. Hey, here we go. Oh. Oh. Get out of here. Times uh, 2n plus 1 factorial over x to the 2n plus 1. All right, we only got two things really to worry about. Limit as n approaches infinity, of absolute value of, there are two extra x's on top. The bottom, if I made them both 2n plus 1 factorials, what I would have left is 2n plus 2 and 2n plus 3. If there are both 2n plus 1 factorials, I'd have to make the 2n plus 3 factorial. But what happens when the denominator is headed towards infinity? What happens to the fraction? It goes to zero. zero. So this one's headed to zero. So all of this equals zero no matter what x is. And that's less than one. So that means the interval of convergence, here's your negative infinity to infinity. Anything will work. You can plug anything in for x, and this is headed to zero. The radius of convergence is infinity. So we had one with a nice interval, a nice radius. We have geometric, we threw geometric in there. One with everything's infinity. Let's look at this one. We have the limit as n approaches infinity. Absolute value of n plus 1 factorial. x minus 3 to the n plus 1 over n factorial x minus 3 to the n. So n plus 1 over n. a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And we didn't have a fraction, so we're not multiplying by the reciprocal. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity. Absolute value of, I can make the top n factorial times n plus 1. And that's n plus 1 factorial over n factorial. Those cancel out and you're left with n plus 1. And then there's an extra x minus 3. So everything in the denominator goes away. It cancels. Well, now n is going to infinity. And infinity plus 1 is infinity. So now we have infinity times x minus 3. The limit's gone now. So now we're looking at the fact that 0 times infinity would be 0. And it's not an indeterminate form because the limit's gone. It went away. I did the limit. I didn't get an indeterminate form when I did a limit. Now I'm going to get an indeterminate form after the limit, and that's too late. And here's what I mean. The only way that this is going to be less than 1 is if I make this 0. So this converges for a single value, for 3. It converges for 3. It diverges for everything else. So the interval of convergence is not really an interval. It's just the number 3. And the radius of convergence is zero because there's no, there's no radius. 
radius is zero, it's just one value. So we got all three kinds. For the test, this is where students struggle. They don't know what the difference between this one is and this one. That's where students tend to struggle on the test. I would put a big circle around this to go study this. Study these two right here. Seems like students are good with the interval. When it's nice, I don't see too many problems. Little errors. Uh, the big problem I see is getting these backwards, saying that's infinity and that's zero, or all kinds of weird things come up. So take a look at those two things. But we're going to practice it. Uh, let's try this one. Go. Limit as n approaches infinity. Six minus two to the n plus one over n plus one, two to the n plus one times n to the n over x minus two to the n. So we have everything set up. Now you take it one piece at a time. How about uh, the x minus two? So there's an extra x minus two. There's an extra two down here. And there's not much you can do with the ends yet. Those, those didn't cancel at all. Now, when you plug infinity in for n, we're going to get uh, this is equal to x minus 2 over 2 absolute value. And we need that to be less than 1. Negative 1 less than x minus 2 over 2 less than 1 multiplied by 2. So radius of convergence is right here. We're centered at 2. And we're going two to the right, two to the left. So two is the radius of convergence, and when we add two, we get zero less than x less than four. And notice two is right down the middle of zero and four. So the interval of convergence is uh, two, zero, excuse me, zero to four. Try this one. And we're getting one of each here. So I wouldn't expect a nice interval on this one. Unless I do. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens with this one. Limit as n approaches infinity x to the 2n plus 2. 
over 2m plus 3 factorial. 2m plus 1 factorial over x to the 2n. So there it is set up, right? There it is set up. Two things to worry about. Uh, we have an x, two extra x's on top. And then in the denominator, we'll have 2n plus 2, 2n plus 3. Because both will be 2n plus 1 factorial. We have to create that 2n plus 3 factorial though. So we have to go two more. That's 0, which is less than 1. So interval of convergence is negative infinity to infinity because this will always go to 0. And the radius of convergence is infinity. So that's kind of the, the other type. So we have had a nice interval. We had the infinite one. And I'm guessing the next one is going to be the one where you have one value. So let's give it a try. Go with the next one to the right. plus one over the end term. Now the top can become n factorial times n plus one, and the bottom can become n factorial. So we created, we rewrote n plus one factorial in a different way. Those cancel out. That leaves n plus one in the top and an x plus one in the top. So that's equal to infinity times x plus 1. So the interval of convergence is not really an interval. It's negative 1. And the radius of convergence is 0. There's no radius at all. So we did two of each. Two with a nice interval. Two with infinity. Two with a, a one value of convergence. Yeah, I know the difference. Make sure you study that. Uh, this one's a little different with the x squared. We have limit as n approaches infinity. Oh, let's not do that. Uh, what do you notice? Anything? I just noticed it. Geometric, isn't it? There's nothing added in that's messing it up. Like if I threw an n there, it's not geometric anymore. But we don't have that. All right, so r is equal to x squared minus 1 over 3. Absolute value of x squared minus 1 over 3 has to be less than 1. And now with that x squared, that causes a problem because we don't want to square root negative values. So I don't want to split this up too early. So let's multiply 3 over. Let's add 1 out of here. And now I don't need the absolute value. But then when we square root, then we have... Um, absolute value of x is now less than 2. So here's where we can split it up. So the interval of convergence is negative 2 to 2. Radius of convergence is 2. So that's an eagle in Nebraska. Don't split it up too early when you got x squared in there. Now if you had x to the third, now it's a different story. Because you can take the third root of negatives. No problem. 
Find the interval of convergence of the series and within this interval, the sum of the series as a function of x. What's the only function you know in this chapter? It's going to talk about it for a while. Someone knows. Okay, so 1 over 1 minus r, right? So a function is a sub 1 over probably 1 minus something with x, right? So the r is going to be related to x somehow. But we know it is 1 minus r, but it's going to be in x. Function of x. This is, that's geometric, but in a weird way. Uh, so find the interval of convergence. So let's plug 0 in, we get 1. Then if I plug 1 in, it's x plus 1 squared over 9. So if I plug 1 in. If we plug 2 in, that is x plus 1 to the 4n over 9 squared. So a sub 1 is 1. What's the r? Oh, not 4n, but 4. This is just a 4. So what's r? Yeah, x plus 1 squared over 9. So x plus 1 squared over 9. So now we want absolute value of x plus 1 squared over 9 is less than 1. So we can't, we don't want to take square root of negatives, so let's multiply 9 over. Now we don't need the absolute value because anything we square is going to be positive. So the, the absolute value would be redundant. We square root, and we get 3. So absolute value, excuse me, absolute value of x plus 1. So when we square root, now that absolute value comes back into play. Negative 3 less than x plus 1 less than 3. Add a minus, what am I doing? Radius or interval? Interval. All right. So minus 4 less than x minus 2. So the interval of convergence is negative 4 to 2. Now our function in x is a sub 1 over 1 minus r. So x plus 1 squared over 9. So let's multiply everything by 9. We can probably go a little further with pretty with some ease. 9 minus x squared plus 2x plus 1. So I don't know. You might see this on a multiple choice. Um, 9 minus 1 is 8. 8 plus 2x minus x squared. Oh no, what? 8 minus 2x. I love the next one. This one's. I like how. I like. It has a good ending. It's like the sixth sense. You ever seen that movie? Horribly slow movie, one of the greatest endings ever. It, it makes you want to watch it all over again. Have who's seen it? Six cents. Nobody. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. All right. Um, plug zero in, right? You get one. Plug one in, you get sine of x over two. Then you get sine squared x over four, and so on. So a sub one is one. R is sine of x over 2. That's what we're multiplying by each time. The absolute value of sine of x over 2 is less than 1. So we're going to multiply. Oh, and, then, and we're not worried about square rooting, so we've got negative 1 less than sine of x over 2 less than 1. Negative 2 is less than sine of x is less than 2. So what, what's the biggest value sign can possibly be? What's the smallest value can possibly be? So what's the interval of convergence? Negative infinity to infinity. You plug in anything you want, it's going to be between negative 2 and 2, I guarantee it. Uh, so the interval of convergence is negative infinity to infinity. And uh, they, want the, they want the function. Uh, 
f of x is equal to one. Yeah, it starts with one over one minus sine of x over two. Not much you can do with this. Two over two minus sine of x is what, probably what a multiple choice would say. That's all you can really do. However, now we're done with this problem as far as the instructions are concerned. But if I said, what did we just do? I wonder who, I wonder who can tell me. What was all this about? So what? What did we do? Yeah, go ahead, give it a try. Finding out what x values we can input so that the series from zero to infinity or more than zero to infinity converts. Okay. I like that answer. Not what I was going for. But I like it. Are you curious at all? Did I tell you? I, mean, like, I kind of want to. Are you tired of waiting? Okay, here's what we did. Let's write out a few terms. Now, am I clear that the problem's done? That you wouldn't have to go on on your homework and do any of this? All right, we're done. We found the function. We found, what else did we find? Oh, the interval convergence. So check and check. We're done. So this is 1 plus sine of x over 2. Option. Let's go a few. Let's go s sine squared of x over, what was it, 4? Plus sine to the third of x over, what, 8? How about one more? Sine to the fourth x over, uh, what, 16? What should we pick? We can pick any number we want. Let's pick something nice. How about, uh, let's go with x equals 1, meaning 1 radian, which is about, how many degrees is 1 radian about? Do you remember? Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, wait, no. 180 is a pi right? Yeah. What is it? What's it really close to? It's 50. Oh, I can't remember now. Is it 57? I think you're right. 57? I was, I was up being all so I'm like, hey, I'm going to tell you what it's about. I'm like, oh crap, I don't know what it is. It's somewhere around 60 degrees. Is it 57? Anyway, who cares? Um, pick a value, right? 1 plus sine of 1 divided by 2 plus or sine. There it is. Sine squared. Oh, here we go. Uh, 1 squared divided by 4 plus sine of 1 to the third divided by 8. Is it squared? Oh, that's okay. oh, squared. Third divided by 8 plus last one, sine of 1 to the fourth divided by 16. Right? So what did that just do? What I do there? An estimate, right? Because I could go 100 more terms if I wanted to get a better estimate. An estimate for what? For that function, right? So the series is an estimate for this function right here. So f of 1 is 2 over 2 minus sine of 1. Yep. So this should be close if I entered it in like it should be. 2 minus sine of 1. Okay, so it doesn't converge very quickly, right? It's only accurate to one decimal place. So what, what's the next question I usually ask on this? Okay. Yeah, what's the error? How, how far are we off? And we're off pretty far. It only, it's only good to one decimal place. So that's how, that's how much it's good for. So we'd have to go to a lot of, a lot of terms to uh, actually get something that's really accurate. But, so this one converges pretty slow. That's what we did. We found, first of all, integral of convergence is, where is, it, where is this the good series? But this is supposedly the exact answer. This is the approximate answer when you pick a value. 